And now I want to take a look at some of the other offerings for spreadsheet software. We've seen a lot of what Google offers and it's pretty much fully functional and fully featured. Um, the other offerings just have a lot more sort of bells and whistles that let you kind of adjust how things look and maybe make some things more convenient. We can see this is Excel for the Mac. It looks a little different than Excel on, say, Windows, but it works pretty much the same. It lets you, you know, enter values just like you would in the Google offering. It lets you enter functions in different ranges and it gives you kind of a similar kind of contextual hints to see what's going on. One thing that's very nice that Google does not offer, if we click on formulas, we can see that it has this right here. It's a, um, a kind of a picker for functions. This is really easy in Google. You kind of have to know what you're looking for. This you can kind of poke around and find things. One thing that's really nice in Excel that Google does not offer is if you click on formula like we have here they have this formula builder which let's put the cursor in G1 we'll click formula builder and then we have a list of all the formulas that we can use or functions we can use if we double click on average then we get this option to sort of pick a range and then it will automatically populate this cell with that average. It's really useful if you're not entirely sure how to use a function or what a function is used for. It's really handy to build um, tables and do data analysis that way. It makes things a little bit easier. Um, that's one of the best features of Excel. Um, otherwise, it has a bunch of things to help you check for errors. One other thing that Excel offers that Google doesn't is this option to trace precedence and trace dependence. So if we click on this, we get, first thing, we get a little bit of a warning because of this empty cell right here. So if we put a value in there, that will go away. Um, one of the other things it will do is if we click trace precedence, it's basically saying that all of these cells are what fill this cell. So we can also, if we remove those arrows, we can click on this one because this is a sum and this kind of does the same thing. So let's go ahead and remove those errors, arrows, not errors. And then if we click on this one and click trace dependence, it points to this cell here showing that this cell is dependent upon that cell. And again, we can do this because this, if we click on this cell with trace dependence, it points to both D1 and G1 to kind of show us that that's where those are coming from. Now that's the sort of thing that Excel offers that Google offering really doesn't. This isn't really more functionality. These are sort of nice to haves. Like if you're working with a really large database or a really large spreadsheet, this makes your life a little easier trying to find out what is related where. It's just a really good way of trying to figure these things out. Um, and that's the kind of thing that is offered in Excel. It's one of the things that makes it a little bit easier to use than Google. Um, like I said earlier, the main reason why I chose Google is because not everybody has Excel. And even if you have Excel on Windows, it likely looks quite different than it does on a Mac. So speaking of offerings on a Mac, looking at LibreOffice, you can see it looks very similar. It has a kind of a little bit of a different design, but this works pretty much the same way. You can enter in values, whatever you kind of want to do, just like you would in just like you would in Excel or the Google offering. This one also has a function wizard. Well, let me just show you. So say we pick mathematical and we want, I don't know, well, let's see, it looks like it's not there. So the one I'm looking for is going to be probably under statistical it's average so we click that and then click next and now it wants us to populate the fields so this basically just gives us a big long string of numbers because um, we can basically add as many as we want up to 30 and see it's really nice because as you change it you can see it's actually giving you what the formula will look like and here it's time tell telling you what the result will be so you can also click here to sort of help you pick straight out of the sheet and then that plugs that back in. Now what if you wanted for say the second number, what if you wanted another value? Well you can do that too. So we can come in here and say pick mathematical this time and we're gonna come down and say let's throw pi in there. Why not? So we'll just throw pi in there 
and that's that we click OK and there we go and that's that's how you would build a function if you say you weren't certain which features to which formulas to use or which functions to use you can use this builder one other thing it has a kind of a quick sum right here um, and you just do this to enter a function that's pretty similar to Excel this also has if you go to tools and detective it also has trace precedence and trace dependence so we can click on that and you see it's sort of the same thing as Excel and now Personally, I kind of like this a little better than Excel because I think the interface is cleaner. Um, it actually ironically reminds me a lot of earlier versions of Excel, but I personally find it a little bit easier to use and it's, I think, a little bit more fully functional than uh, numbers on the Mac and I, I just, I like it a little bit better. And it's free, which is pretty big in my book. So this is numbers on the Mac. Uh, you can see right away one of the things that kind of makes it a little bit different is you can rearrange what your work area looks like and then you can kind of click and drag and move it around. That's you know interesting and all and then you can kind of create interesting views and setups so you can put text boxes in so if you want to build like a, a pretty chart or a poster or something you can do that so you can type things in here you can insert shapes and kind of just make kind of a, a report out of it you can also say you put in some data you can create a chart and plug that in here and then it just kind of give a nice little organization you can sort of do things like this in conjunction with say if you were using Word and Excel you can kind of do that there uh, this is basically just like you do it all in one place so it's not really more functionality it's more different functionality one thing that most of the Mac products have in common is this inspector so it's sort of uh, one window that kind of groups everything that you see up here or up here on Excel this is of course LibreOffice it kind of groups it all in one place so it's a little bit easier to find and a lot of these things are also available through these menu items but this kind of lowers the learning curve for the entire office suite so that's one thing that makes it a little bit nicer uh, this one also you know you can of course enter values and once you've entered values you have a function browser on this one that works kind of similar to what we have in Word and LibreOffice so this gives you sort of a list of everything um, that you can do in functions so you can say search for sum and it's right there and insert function and it sort of throws it right in here and then it kinda lets you pick you know what you want for values I accidentally put two in there but then if we click on this and then we can do the the, a click and drag and that populates it and hit enter and there we go that's sort of the sum of all of these and then of course you have this formula list that kind of shows this is sort of like the trace precedence thing only it gives a little bit more detail it is kind of less visual it shows you sort of what table it's in what cell it's in what the results are and what the formula is it's kind of nice if you have a whole bunch of stuff going on you can kind of group it all in one place but the one thing this doesn't have this doesn't do the same kind of trace precedence descendants like Excel and LibreOffice does it really only uses this formula list to do that so like I said it's kind of a a less visual way I mean you can click on it and it will highlight it but it doesn't draw the arrows like the other one does and you know you can pick different styles to make your your work look different so it's more more fancy and less sort of functional I mean it's very functional but it, it's these are very work centric you know these are really focusing on you have numbers you have data you want to get those done and processed this is more you have information and you want to look make it look pretty uh, not to say that they're not all functional and all worthwhile uh, it just depends on your particular use and what you like personally I like LibreOffice maybe the best its interface is sort of cleaner but it still gives you a lot of power it's not as cluttered as the offering from Microsoft but it offers more functionality than numbers so I think it's kind of a good middle ground between the three and if you guys are interested we can go into any of these a little bit more in depth for the most part everything we've covered already with spreadsheets and creating charts and things um, everything else is sort of um, 
just ways of making that easier so like the function browsers and things like that but it's stuff you've already learned how to do that's what I meant about once you've sort of learned those techniques coming to one of these it'll be like you have superpowers because now you don't have to try and remember all of these formulas you'll, you'll know they're there and if you don't remember how they go you can just sort of look them up